Collins' network for Black, Asian and minority ethnic staff to bring this series to you. Our overall aim with this series is to attract new talent by reaching out to aspiring authors and provide helpful advice to everyone through these open discussions. If you caught our panel two weeks ago, we started experts, Amara Easter, who is the HarperCollins UK Trade Marketing Manager, Georgina Ugin, who is the HarperCollins UK Digital Sales Manager, and Melissa Mystery, who is the Senior Account Manager for William Collins and Fourth Estate at HarperCollins. The aim of our discussion is to provide you with lots of information and context about the different sales approaches to publishing and ultimately answer any questions that you have when it comes to selling books. So please do comment away with your questions as we go and tag anyone right now that you think will be interested in this panel so we can reach and help as many people as possible through this discussion. But now, please help me in welcoming Amara, Georgina, and Melissa. Here we go, bring them in. Oh, my computer seems to have, I've had a little freeze, which is ideal on my host screen to bring people in. Let me just refresh one second, not going anywhere. Okay, I think that, yep, they're, they're, bring, they're coming in this time now. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And here we go. Georgina, you can hear us as yes, well? Yes, I finally. <laughs> oh, my goodness, guys. Not going to keep on watching. We've had all the technical difficulties <laughs> tonight. Seriously. Sorry. But, you know, no, I'm sorry. I don't. I'm going to be investigating what went wrong after this. But fingers crossed, right? I think the main thing is that we can all hear each other and mm. everyone out there can see us and hear us. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, so... First of all, um, as I introduced you all when we, when we first started, we have Amara, Georgina, and Melissa joining us tonight. Um, please, can you, well, all, well Amar, Amara's in, next to me in this, <laughs> in this corner of the screen. Uh, Melissa is below me, and Georgina is across over there. Hey, <laughs> amazing. Um, so yeah, first, first of all, just want to thank you all for joining me tonight because it's just so exciting to be able to continue on our Let's Talk Publishing, pu Let's Talk Publishing series. Um, and as I was saying, I'm just excited that we can talk about sales with three incredible sales experts. Um, so first of all, I thought we could, whilst we get started, have a have a quick little get to know each other, um, and so the viewers can get to know us as well and talk about our favorite recent read um, to start to start us off with. I know, tough question, but everyone out there, please comment as well. Uh, who would like to go first? <laughs> Any volunteers? <laughs> Yeah, Melissa. Oh, oh, yeah. Wow. I've got a prop. I've, got a I've always got a prop. Um, no, I read um, The Emperor's Babe by Bernadine um, Evaristo last week, and oh, it was incredible. Um, really funny, witty, sharp. Um, she's a brilliant writer, which I'm sure anyone who's read Girl, Woman, Other will know already, but it's definitely worth going back and reading her backlist because there are some incredible gems hidden in there as well. And this one, The, the Emperor's Babe, is just brilliant. It's, um, it's written all in like verse basically um and it follows a um um 16 year old as she gets married off at a very young age and sort of her wanting to live rather than just survive and all the things that she gets up to and it's just incredible amazing that's a great recommendation um what about you georgina what is your favorite recent room um i was actually reading a children's book um, I think that's publishing in January. And it's called Amari and the Night Brothers. Um, it's really, really fun read. They're saying it's like a cross between um, Harry Potter, but it's definitely um, Harry Potter and like Men in Black because she goes to a school where she finds out that there's actually like all these supernatural beings um, and she has to kind of take them on. She wants to be an agent. So it's really, really cool, fun read um, for kids. I'm really excited about that one coming out. And it's got a really diverse um, cast of characters as well. So I'm really excited about that. A great, um, easy read um, if you're looking for something a bit more lighthearted um, this winter. Yeah, in these times, definitely. What about you, Amara? Has she frozen? Oh, I think she did. She freeze? 
there's a bit of a pause. There's a bit of a lag after the, yeah. I was like, oh, she was just so intently listening to. <laughs> um, yeah. Hopefully she'll come back. Yeah, I might have to, I might get her to, I, if, Amara, if you can hear us, please could you rejoin or refresh? Because I think. Oh, no, there she is. Pause. Okay. Am I think, I here? Am I here? Oh, you're here. That was a weird little glitch. Interesting. Oh, well, uh, hello, everyone. Um, my read, my recent read is Open Water, um, which is a book that's coming out with uh, Penguin in February. Um, and it's it's the kind of book that is exactly the kind of books I like to read, which is very sort of like character driven. So you learn a lot about the characters. Um, and honestly, it's like really like soft, like sumptuous writing. So I'm really taking my time with this one. And I feel like it's the kind of book that you need to savor. So I'm reading it in between other things because I really want to stretch this out as long as possible. Really trying to make it last. Recommend. I love that. I mean, it seems, you know, all three of you, you know your sa your sales expertise shines through just in that in those descriptions <laughs> of your of the your three recent reads. You know I'm like I just write them down and go straight into reading them. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, I'm sure all our viewers agree. Um, just wondering as well, viewers, what are some of your favourite recent reads? We'd love to discuss that as well. But um, now, thank you for sharing the sharing those answers to get us started. But now I thought we'd jump right in um, to our amazing sales discussion. I'm really excited about this just because I feel like, you know, you never, there's so much so much going on about like, you know, how to get, you know, how to generally get published, but not that much about, you know, what, like what, you know, what does it entail? Like, how do the books get on the shelves? Like, how do, how does that, how does that all work? So I'm um, very excited about this basically. So I thought to start start us off, if maybe you could each go through and talk a little about a little bit about yourself and what's your role specifically um, within within HarperCollins. Uh, so I wonder if um, Regina, would you like to start first? And I'm also going to bring up on the screen uh, for everyone watching um, that, that um, each speaker's name and um, what they do at HarperCollins, so you can keep track of it all. Um, so, Georgina, take it away. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, obviously I'm Georgina, um, I'm a digital um, sales manager at HarperCollins, and so I look after the eBooks and audio books, and we just work with all the digital retailers to make sure we can get all of our author's books on the digital shelves. So we're working with all the um, digital retailers um obviously like kindle like audible google apple all of them um to try and make sure that we get the best placement for um our books Ooh, wow that sounds like a very very busy job um and, and, <laughs> <laughs> well, i know no, it has to do it alone there is a team <laughs> i'm not the only one <laughs> no, like, but i guess that's how you know how how do you how do you work as well with those key retailers? Is it all about developing your relationships yeah. with the, with the with the retailers ultimately? Yeah, it's definitely about um, building relationships. I think that's definitely a key part of sales. Um, we're just making sure that you know, like like we do with readers, we're making sure that they know about the books, about the best books that we have, um, and we want them to highlight them. So we're trying to get them to read them. We're trying to give, get them to give placement on store, um, exactly like how you see in the high street, you see things in the windows um, and on shelves, it's exactly the same for digital. And um, we want kind of the best placement that they can give. Um, and that's basically by building really good relationships with them. And they really kind of trust us when we say we've got really good books um, and mm -hmm. obviously they read them for themselves. Um, so yeah. It's all about trying to get that really good placement for our books. Mm, definitely, that's really interesting. Um, well, we'll come back to that more as we as we go on. Um, but I thought I'd then take this opportunity to segue um, to Melissa, and if you could introduce yourself and uh, what and your job role. Yeah, well. so um, I'm the senior key account manager at William Collins and Fourth Estate, and that basically means um, with all of the key account managers, we deal with the physical books, so your hardbacks and your paperbacks, and um, putting them into what we call like bricks and mortar stores, basically. So Waterstones, WH Smiths, the supermarkets, um, and also Amazon as well, who obviously don't have a bricks and mortar store, but obviously sell a large volume of physical books too. Um, and my job basically entails talking to the buyers um, at all these retailers 
um, telling them what we've got coming up, building those relationships, as Georgina said, um, and just sort of getting them ex as excited about the books as we are, basically, because that's ultimately what the conversation comes down to, just people talking to other people about books so we can sell as many as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit yeah even though physical and digital mm. a little bit a little bit similar like uh, quite um, on on a few different levels as well yeah right yeah, yeah. Sales, so sales yeah no fair it's um it, it's quite different in the sense that obviously we're dealing with in some ways a, a different product obviously you know the the book yeah. landscape and or audio landscape is different to a physical books landscape but i think all of our jobs sort of boil down to that sort of essential of we're talking to someone at a retailer who um is you know at the forefront of what they're doing as well you know they obviously have direct contact with the consumers and they see what people are buying and what trends are and things like that um, and we just got keep that dialogue going to make sure that we are keeping them um, up to date with all the books that we're publishing and um, so they can go and do a good job and, and place them wherever they need to to sell as many copies as possible mm, absolutely um, and now, and finally, Amara, um, please can you tell us a little bit about your job role and who you are? Yeah, sure. Hi. So um, I'm Amara and I work in the trade marketing team at HarperCollins. Um, so I sit within a sales team and similar to Georgina, um, we work. We both work across the groups. So we work across all of HarperCollins. Um, so what I do is I support um the booksellers that will sell the books in bookshops so i work with a lot of waterstones booksellers a lot of independent booksellers and kind of um talk to them all about all of the great books that we've got coming up and kind of support them with any sort of material that they need to help us sell our books so it could be anything from proofs to pos to just knowing more about an author to you know maybe putting them in touch with the right publicist um so i work really closely with all of the key account managers so me and melissa work together we melissa um <laughs> A lot and um i kind of work with all the sales teams around top collins and all the marketing all the marketing teams around top collins as well to help us produce um the right sales material to help sell all of our books yeah well that's amazing that's like just sounds like the, the busiest job really <laughs> like you know you're in between all of these all of these different teams and i think that especially i feel like that's a role that a lot of people might not know about or think about mm. really as well that there's like you know how and how like i guess trade marketing differs from you know from consumer marketing and how mm. closely you're you know building those so like but like you know um melissa and georgina you're building those core relationships but i guess just in a in a different way or in a you know in a complementary way ultimately yeah, I think what I think what's really interesting about my role is that I ha I work um, in tandem with a lot of people, so it is sort of like we kind of all build in each other's work, which I think is probably very indicative of publishing. Like it's a very sort of collaborative environment that lots of people are working on a book, and there's lots of different roles that you might not even know that are happening behind the scenes that are just happening, but might look super organic and super natural. <laughs> yeah exactly it looks like it just happens you know we just want you know we were just like we're yeah. just looking on and then we wander into the shop and oh there it is but no there's all of these behind the scenes going on <laughs> amazing um so i think that's a yeah a really great introduction to everything that you guys would be uh you know yeah. up to um and please everyone uh, start asking us away questions as we go but i'm now going to ask these experts some more specific questions um, to, to really get into mining their knowledge. Um, so something that I find really interesting is, you know, how, so we've kind of talked a bit about, you know, how the, all of your roles interrelate in some ways, but are also so different and especially on the physical and sa digital sales side. But so I guess I'm kind of wondering how, how do you guys think about or how do you know when something when a book is a paperback or a like physical book or a digital focus um and how do you kind of approach those differently as well from a sales point of view um, do you want to go melissa or do you want me to go i'll, 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 go, I'll go first um yeah so um it's well firstly it's not a decision that we obviously take 
ourselves within the sales team it's obviously a decision that we talk about quite a lot with our marketing teams our editorial teams our PR teams as well thinking very carefully when we you know when we first buy a book when we first acquire a book into the, in the place book within the company where what's the market for this where is this going to sell what are the best channels that this is going to sell through and then sort of tailoring your sort of you know we talk a lot about marketing campaigns and PR campaigns but actually tailoring your sales campaign as well to think about which retailers you want to target or where you've got the best opportunity of selling as many copies as possible so there'll be something you know if we're you know for my division for example the sort of like literary fiction or non-fiction um that's they're the kind of books that people often like to um to to own as like a hardback or a paperback so we think very carefully about the the sort of waterstones and and amazon and you know that those kind of retailers instead but there are other books that sort of sit on the more commercial end where actually they've got a real life in um, in ebook sales or in audio sales as well instead which is actually where georgina's team comes in to start thinking about where their sales campaign will sit and how they're going to target their retailers and make this a digital first um uh, digital first publication for example Mm, absolutely. Um, oh, sorry, we just had a little, like, that was a continuous, great, brilliant explanation, but I might, there was a couple of dropouts um, around oh, that. Oh, no. No, no, not, not from you, but just from around, like, the, Amara's back in again. No, um, and back in again. Yeah, weirdly enough, um, Georgina's stream seems to have dropped out, so I'm hoping that she will, um, she will come back in um, and join us so she can you know, comparatively talk about the the digital focus side of things um so i'll bring her back i'll bring her back in when she does join us again but melissa that was an absolutely brilliant explanation mm -hmm. uh, and i wonder amara if you had anything you want you wanted to add as well to that. um i think kind of i come into the process um more later when the formats have been decided so i think that's another mm. way that me and melissa would work together it would be like you know melissa and you know the whole of fourth estate would kind of decide what is good for their markets and then they would um talk to the field sales reps for example who work with lots of independent bookshops and we'd all kind of discuss what what the focus would be so again i, I think i'm going to keep repeating this all throughout this but it's generally a very sort of like sales especially is a very sort of collaborative process so it's lots of diff talking to different um account managers to see what book is best suited for what market so it's it's and it's not, it's like a decision that requires a lot of discussion and it isn't one that you know someone just snaps their fingers just like hey this is a book that's going to happen um it, it does it, there's a lot of like discussion and a lot of like experts involved in it from around the company yeah yeah and i would i would add to that as well but obviously as salespeople and and as i said earlier we're the people who sort of have that direct contact with retailers and we do talk to them quite often about you know what works best for their consumer base so you mm. know georgina will be talking to um, her digital retailers about you know you know what kind of marketing campaign we could pull together to help sell ebooks or audios through through those channels instead versus what i would do which is talking to bricks and mortars retailers and thinking about how to sort of position things towards that side instead yeah exactly and i guess amara do you you feed back as well what you kind of your relationships with the booksellers mm. as well what, what they're sort of looking to see yeah absolutely so there's a whole um field sales reps team so they work with um independent bookshops and um obviously there's a key account manager for sense and stuff so i think everyone kind of feeds back from what we hear from retailers so it's a very sort of like we work together um relationship with everyone sharing their kind of knowledge yeah um, and i think georgina's back you can hear us again yes yeah. i can <laughs> sorry no don't worry at all um so i so you might i'm not sure if you heard um yeah the comp so you did it great um just wondering how what how does it what you thought about this question and from a digital sales point of view how you might approach um a book um differently to say yeah i think what melissa said before it's not obviously um just up to us so there's a lot of people involved um but from the digital perspective one of the things that you know can um tip it be a digital more of a digital focus um as melissa said you know sometimes um there could be a very commercial focus and or the author may already have um you know quite a, a big ebook following already sometimes when we acquire the author so that could be a reason um, but the other thing is that you know in terms of audio um if we have a really good narrator or if the author is you know doing non-fiction and um usually they would narrate it themselves if they're already kind of well known or have a platform and sometimes people want to hear their voice um and then we know that they you know kind of more of a digital priority also if they've got like 
another kind of platform like a podcast or something else that's kind of audio focused, we know that they already have that audio audience. So that would make us lean more towards, um, you know, like a an audio focused book. Um, so it just kind of depends on, as Melissa said, on the audience for the book and where we kind of want to push um, that title. Yeah, and I guess as we've all been saying, it's it's all I think something key to take away, isn't it? That it's just such a collaborative process. Um, mm -hmm. That and I think another obvious from your with your relationships with retailers, you can feed so much um, insight back into the publishing, which is really cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's that key. Is. Getting um sometimes getting feedback from the retailers um is really helpful in kind of the strategy that we choose um going forward with the book. Mm, absolutely. That's so kind of another question that I um I guess uh that I have here, which maybe kind of relates a little bit to that to that point of um working closely with the retailers and how that that I think that's such a fascinating I in, you know, fascinating part of your roles, how you're connecting straight to where we need to sell and back into us, which is super cool. Um, and so this question is, uh, what do you think that, like what are retailers kind of looking for when you pitch them the books or how do you, how do you know, I guess, what to pitch them or what to, what's gonna work? Um, yeah. <laughs> It's so <laughs> I mean, there, there are so many things that you have to sort of think about when you're um, when you're putting together a pitch for a retailer. And actually, one of the first things to say is that um, you have to remember that they see almost every book that everyone is publishing across the industry. They see a lot. Um, and so often what it really comes down to is like these one or two really core things, you know, the real USPs for whatever you're presenting to them that's gonna make it stand out in their head. And whenever we're pitching to a retailer, that's what we need to keep in, in our mind. Um, obviously, you know, we'll talk about how much we love the book and we can talk about the plot, we can talk about the characters and things like that. But the other things that, you know, which is what you know we're working collaboratively with other departments comes in like marketing and PR but the things that can often make a difference is you know um you know what marketing campaign we're doing or how we might be targeting or how our marketing campaign is going to specifically target the consumers that are you you know going to that retailer for example mm -hmm. um, and those points often make a can also make a big difference to how we sort of pitch our books to to them as well um, and we use all of those things you know the, the marketing points, the PR points, and what the author has actually produced themselves, the incredible piece of work that they produced mm. um, to weave together um, a narrative for the for the buyer or for our retailer to um, to give it the best shot we can to, 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 to get them as excited about it as we can. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I think the passion and, like you said, making sure that they know the whole plan, not just mm. the book. Um, everything has to kind of go together from the cover. Um, I think it all kind of works together to make this book stand out. As Melissa said, they see everything. So when we're talking about a book, we really have to think about the USP and what's going to make it stand out. So yeah, definitely agree with that. I guess, yeah, and what's going to stand out to them specifically, because I guess as well, like every retailer is different, looking for different yeah. things, perhaps. And I think they all want the books, we have to know the books that work for them. So, mm. um, you know, there's no point in pitching something um, to an audio retailer where it's not an audio focus or something. So it just depends on um, their audience, knowing their audience, knowing what works for them and tailoring mm -hmm. your pitches to them. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And yeah, Amara, do you feed that back a lot like as well from your, your conversations with um, sellers? Like yeah, I think from what, from the way that I work with booksellers, I think I think it's exactly that, is that with the, they give us um, lots of feedback on the kind of books that we can then give back to the divisions to be like, this is what, to the rest of the company. So like, this is what, you know, this bookseller has said about it. Um, and it's, it's great to be able to to do that. Um, so it's kind of like we, we work together with retailers to really make a book. And I think what retailers are looking for, again, is like what the passion, what everyone has said, but also that we, we know them enough to give them the right book if that makes sense so we i think um every salesperson kind of does this but works really hard on cu like curating the list for a particular mm -hmm. retailer so it kind of builds that relationship so they can sort of like you know understand that you know them and and trust you with your recommendations mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i think um like often i think often when you say sales when you say you can work in sales to people they have a very mm -hmm. specific image in their head of you know like a guy and he's on the phone and he's like shouting numbers down the phone and it's all very exciting. Yeah. And it's not that and it's not that at all. It's very much like as Amara and Georgina said, it's about like building that relationship and 
building the trust as well they and um, they trust mm. you to show them the right books for their for their market mm. um and you can trust them to give them the, the attention that it deserves as well mm. um and it's and it's the um that sort of like give and take and that back and forth between the two that helps sales or hopefully mm. helps be as successful as we are mm. Mm. absolutely i think so very successful very successful <laughs> <laughs> And we're getting some great questions here. So I'm going to bring a couple of start bringing a couple of them up from the audience. Um, so Jackie has asked, um, is there any feeling that the global pandemic has changed what retailers are looking for? Um, E.g. more uplit, feel good fiction. Um, as Jackie is one of our authors of um, an, an amazing psychological thriller. Um, so she says, please say they still want crime slash thrillers. <laughs> I don't think you need to worry, Jackie. <laughs> you would think that people would want more uplift um but yes crime is still is still selling so you don't need to worry about that <laughs> Yeah. Also, I think it's like everybody's um, like I think especially in sort of like the early months of the pandemic everyone was is like looking to books because you want you want a form of entertainment that isn't on your screen so I think that we'll, we'll always have readers right mm -hmm. definitely so there'll always be um, someone for every genre I don't think that there's going to be a particular absolutely like have you, been, have you been having any feedback though from um any re retailer that's like i want more of this or i want more of that or not or not from a like digital that. point of view um i feel like because we all we all sell kind of a bit of everything that yeah it's kind of there's not really a particular genre that's no, I think I think the only thing that people everyone is still just looking for really good stories, yeah. really yeah. good story tell, and that doesn't matter what genre it comes from. It doesn't matter if it comes from crime thriller. It doesn't matter if it's uplit, feel good. There's a market out there. There's still a market out there for all these different genres and all these mm. different um, reading experiences as well. You know, whether that's physical or audio, ebook, whatever. Mm. Um, and um, as long as as long as our authors keep the good content coming, <laughs> there'll, there'll be yeah. people to buy them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think that as well, you know, it seems that, you know, if there is a, like you say, if there's a mass, an amazing story, then, you know, but if we're just going to be able to make anything work. And especially you guys with all your amazing relationships, you're just like, <laughs> hey, replay this, let's go. Um, <laughs> so we've got some other questions here. Um, Julie has asked, um, well, actually, this actually was a bit of a similar, a little bit like we've just answered, but what genres are you finding retailers are particularly keen on stocking at the moment? I suppose it's a little bit different. Is there anything that at the same at the same time as we could, any any sort of story is great, but is there anything that you think that they are stocking a lot of right now? Or I, I wouldn't say anything's changed in terms of like genres, anything's changed a huge amount amount in this mm. in this sort of past year and um, but i think one thing to keep in mind is actually that you know obviously different retailers are looking for very different things for their for their consumer bases you know if you go to if you go into an asda the the book range there is obviously going to be very different to a smith's or a waterstones mm -hmm. or even from an apple or um a google or any or anyone like that um so um i think people are just looking for more of what works for them if retailers mm -hmm. like anything it's like a sales history and they know <laughs> when they know what works for them they'll they'll continue mm -hmm. to to look for similar kind of things and um and just sort of keep selling them through yeah exactly. and i guess maybe a point to make for people watching is that i get there's you know as we said at the beginning there are so many different retailers and so mm -hmm. each you know, they're, that they're i guess yes perhaps they are you know waterstones maybe will be looking for mm -hmm. you know more water you know waterstones type books and then you know like Sainsbury's will be looking more for um you know those you know fun quick reads type yeah. book um and so I guess the point is that there's kind of a place for everything exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think also to Melissa's point is maybe that's one thing that um I think authors should be more aware of is that you know your book may be for a particular retailer and we're going to get it there. Um, it's not that it's, it's not that, um, you know, we didn't get it to that other retailer. It just might be that, you know, your book would sell well in a particular retailer and that's why we've gone for that one. So I think, um, you know, knowing which retailers sell what kind of books would, would probably be more a better kind of um, tip than thinking about what genres are working. Yeah, definitely. That's a really good point. Um, 
So we've got another question. This is more of a this is more of a publishing general question, but I think it's a good one from Avneet. Uh, she says, "Are there any key skills or experience you think are necessary such look for uh, in an application to work in sales? Um, and are there any books you have recently enjoyed working on?" <laughs> a nice question. Um, who would like to answer this one? <laughs> um, I would. I would say that, um, and I'm. I'm very aware, as I said this, that when I started off in publishing, I was not a very confident person. But being able to actually like have a com like you know just have a proper conversation with someone about um, a book that you that you love is a really good place to start. Um, and being able to talk passionately about something as well. Mm. And guys, I have to say because I know we work in a words industry, but numbers are very very important. <laughs> 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 some, some, you know, some, some basic Excel and um, knowledge. Um, you know, being able, being able to work out a percentage difference has changed my life mm. a lot over the past few years. <laughs> 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 some, some, some data literacy, um, you know, it's great to start off with. And even if you don't feel like you're very data literate when you do start in publishing, mm. you can pick it up very, very quickly. And I'll tell you right now, Excel. Whew, it's your best friend. It's my friend. Best it's my friend. best friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that what you said about, you know, in terms of books, in terms of working in publishing, I mean, sales, you definitely need to kind of, you need to know your books. You need to be into the books. You need to be able to talk about them, as Melissa said, and be passionate about them. You need to be able to get, you know, the retailer on your side and wanting to push this book as much as you do. So I think that's definitely having the passion for books is definitely key when you're working um, in sales and publishing. Yeah. And I think and sort of like having an awareness of um, the sort of like market in general. So just like thinking, just being able to talk about all the books that are coming out, for example, that mm. um, that you notice are doing really well, or if there's a particular campaign or something that you think has worked well, I think it's always good to come to an interview with that knowledge, mm. not just about the publisher you're going for, but just like the wider market in general. Yeah. And, and actually, I think just listening is such a, an underrated mm. skill um, in sales sometimes it's, it's often people think sales is just about talking 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 until you wear the mm. other person down and it's not that at all it's about being able to listen to what the person across the table is saying to you about why this book might not be working mm. for them or you know what could be better you know what could work on the cover to make it better for their market or something like that and you know taking that on board and talking to them about it and then taking it back to the business as well yeah I think what's really good about sales is that it, a lot of it is talking and having a conversation with people about great books and I feel like a lot of people do that anyways so I think that you should all come work in sales because genuinely it's quite fun <laughs> just spend time talking about books it's great I think it's fun I think Ben just might maybe I should just swap guys no come on over come on over <laughs> Um, and and to uh, the second half of the question, are there? Which I, this is a great question. Are there any books you have recently um, really enjoyed working on? Um, I think it's not it's not super recent, but in the past couple mm -hmm. months, I think for me, um, like for the I've only worked um, at Hopkins for a couple of years, but for me, I think um, the the last Hilary Mantel was really exciting because mm. it was such a long run up until the publication. So there was so much um, build up beforehand and we really had to work on like a long strategy. So that was a lot of fun. And then obviously mm. come to fruition um, was amazing. So I think for me, that one was really, really good one to work on. You stole mine, Georgina. I know you were there. <laughs> Mario, you were there. We all worked on it. I know we were all there. Like, we were all there. Um, <laughs> that's another example of how, like, you know, how many people yeah. it takes to um, make a book. But we all, um, all three of us, worked on that same campaign. And I think, yeah, I think I'd agree. That's quite a. It, it was a very sort of like long run up, and you did feel like you were a part of something really big. And I feel like that was such a good moment in publishing to be a part of. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Melissa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pick a different book then i'm gonna go for um actually we published a book earlier this year called my dark vanessa um Ooh. which we oh, what a book, a brilliant book um yeah. which unfortunately we published just on the cusp of lockdown right at the end of march which um which was a real shame we, we did like a whole year 
a year lead up to that publication with you're like really getting people excited um and by the way if you haven't read it yet please do because it is an incredible book and um, co-sign co-sign yeah. co-sign yep. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and actually that's another really good example of a book where we worked really closely with amara and her team and mm -hmm. you know targeting the indie bookstores and wallstones booksellers and things like that and also with georgina and her team to get that digital sale really really flying mm -hmm. um, which which it really really did um, and despite all of the sort of hurdles that were put against us at the sort of at the beginning of the year we still managed to make it really really successful so that would be one i love working on and that one people talked about that for a long i think we talked about that for maybe six months yeah. a year i still before. talk about it i still that talk about it came out and people, yeah, it's amazing <laughs> i love that book. Exactly. yeah and it was you know it was everywhere it was everywhere and that's mm. yeah you know, that's I think I, I think every single retailer has read that book because we probably gave them like ten copies every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to read this. I think the corporate marketing team were kind of tired of me just asking for like more and more proofs. So I'd be the one that's like walking around being like, "Hey, could I just have one more?" <laughs> just, just one. <laughs> well, it's just like when you're all you know working. Yeah, it just shows how closely we all work together and how it's just such a it's takes so many people to make a, a book a um, bestseller, doesn't it, as well, which is awesome. Um, so we've got another question here um, from Zaharan, um, and she's asked, how do you make a non-fiction book stand out on a bookshelf? Which, yeah, that is a, that's a, that's a good question. Who would like to answer that? It's a very broad question. <laughs> that's a very, yeah. yeah. Um, I guess, like I said, you can sort of frame it as like, do you how do you approach um, a fiction title and a non-fiction title in a different way when you're talking to when you're talking to retailers or pitching it? Um, or I think not? Um, a, li a little bit differently because obviously when you're talking about fiction, you're talking you are talking about the story and you're trying to get them hooked on that premise. But I think when it's non-fiction, you know, obviously the person who's the author of the book you're talking more about them and their kind of expertise in the area that they're talking about you know so I think it is a little bit different but there's still um so much space for non-fiction and I think um making it stand out I think it's just in terms of the the hook I guess the hook and the cover um yeah I don't really know how else you would make it stand out Melissa I think it's it's so broad because nonfiction. When you really think about what comes mm -hmm. under nonfiction, that so many things come under it. You can you can be talking about a celebrity memoir, or you could be talking about um like a really niche book on like sharks in the ocean and the mm -hmm. lives of sharks in the ocean. You know, like there's there's a there's a, so many things in between that and then something else um, yeah. and so I think when when you're pitching non-fiction um, you just the, what, as Georgina said what you really got to think about is the hook and the USP mm -hmm. like what is this book about and what audience am I speaking to or what audience are we trying to reach when um, when we're sort of selling it in when we're marketing it when we're thinking about PR and things like that um, and when you've got those things sort of down um, you can you can form your sales pitch and you can go to a retailer and say, look, here is a book that might seem niche on the surface, like a, a, mm. a, a niche nonfiction book, but let me tell you why this is bigger than you think it is. Mm. Um, and you can go into that detail. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, anything you'd like to add, Amara? I think that's a very, very useful. No, I think we've all no, got it. That, that was 10 out of 10 answers. <laughs> 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 Love it. Um, so we've got a question here from Zoe. Um, she's asked, uh, is YA fantasy slash PNR doing well with retailers, do you think? I guess this is, again, what we were talking about. It, it just, it's more about, it's, if, it's a, if it's an amazing story, then it's always going to do well, isn't it? And it's about, as you were saying earlier, about what kind of, what it's about the retailer, like what's, what's that retailer looking for? I suppose maybe I don't know. I'm I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing here. I don't know what I'm. <laughs> no, I think I think that you're right. Is then like it's in like every like there is YA is doing. What's PNR? Sorry, one question. Yeah, um, paranormal romance. Ah, uh, love that. I feel like we get a lot of that in. I see a lot of that in digital. Um, yeah, more, I guess in physical. But I don't know, Melissa. Yeah. But paranormal romance, I do see that a lot in digital. Yeah, 
I think that's actually where a lot of the sort of the audience has moved for it actually to, mm -hmm. to digital rather they than want them quite rather quickly digital. I think those authors they tend to do like more than one book a year they want them quite quickly so I think mm. digital's um obviously a lot more um easier to do that with um but yeah I think what you said before good books is good books and I think retailers mm. just want really good books at the moment and I think the YA audience is really big but they know where they want their books and I know that in physical more they want like lots of like gift editions and things like that so I think more in, in physical than digital for YA probably. Mm, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I guess there, then there are so many amazing like and subscription boxes and yeah. services um, for, for for YA mm -hmm. that are really well. And I guess meant, whilst we're mentioning that, that's a whole that's a whole nother yeah. like yeah. Um, yeah. 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 That too. <laughs> There's a whole area of sales that we haven't even touched on in this, which is the sort of what we call the special sales area, which deals with retailers like the subscription boxes, but also places like Oliver Bonas or um, ASOS or, you know, um, things like gift shops and um, art galleries and things like that. I mean, it's it's anywhere that you see a book. So mm. hopefully someone in our company has helped get it there, basically. Um, and that mm. means that there's more outlets for um, for all the sort of different genres that we publish as well. And um, YA is obviously like a really key part of the subscription book um, mm. of the subscription book market. And they because they've really understood what their consumers are looking for and they really understood mm -hmm. what really appeals to them and they've just gone out and they've created a product that really really appeals to them and they've they've nailed it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely so yeah lots of options for you Zoe it's all good um, <laughs> um so another um more like publishing question but I think this we're still about you know we want to discuss with everything um Olivia's asked what does progression typically look like for sales in publishing for example, what would an entry level role be called? And where do you progress from there? That's interesting. Yeah. Um, who would like to take that question? I mean, I can start with the more sort of um, sort of traditional way into sales, but because I know Georgina and Amara have obviously come in from different angles, so they can talk yeah. about that them, themselves. Um, but the sort of in a more sort of traditional structure, you, you start off as a sales assistant, basically. And um, and that's what the, the the role is. Um, and it's quite there's quite an admin heavy job, and it's a lot about presentations, and um, mm -hmm. looking at data, pulling together sales figures, things like that. And um, but you do obviously get opportunities to um to hopefully accompany your manager or your your sales team on sales trips or sales calls and things like that, mm -hmm. um, and talking to retailers and things like that. Um, and as you move up, um, well at least at, at Harper Collins, um, it's, it's sales assistant, and then. It, a sales exec and then a key account manager um, and then a head of sales and then um, a sales director um, that's sort of on the UK side basically um, but it can look quite different depending on if you're in UK or international if you're in digital and um, it can also look quite different across um, across other publishers as well um, but the entry level roles are are assistants or execs basically yeah and that's that's actually the role that I started in as well as digital's um, team assistant um, so I was looking after the team as Amara, as Amara says, as Melissa said, um, in terms of just How dare you. creating. <laughs> sorry, sorry, give me credit. You weren't even talking. <laughs> um, I used to create the presentations um, for for retailers, um, and as she said, like sending out the data, sales data, and things like that. But it was really good experience in terms of learning about the sales team and learning about digital. Um, so I think that's it is a really good place to start because you kind of get to see everything. Um, mm -hmm. And then as you progress, you kind of take on more responsibilities and then eventually um, look after your own accounts um, and things. But yeah, assistant is where it starts. Yeah, I think, um, so for me, I started off as a marketing assistant um, in a different team. And then I moved into sales to do this marketing role. So I think like my role is quite, um, interesting just because you get an overview of like at a junior level you kind of get an overview of, of the company and I think it's really good to to be an assistant in sales for example or a marketing assistant or anything because you get you get you can see how the whole process works as one and I feel like that gives you such a good standing to you know decide where you want to be in publishing because I think a lot of people like you know the classic publishing story people come in to want to be in in, in editorial but then decide that they actually do want to be in sales or marketing or publicity and um, so I think it's kind of kind of a lot of that I think you learn a lot of the when you're 
when you're in an entry level position. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Great. Thanks for the, those answers. Um, so a, great, a question um, here, another one from Safran. Um, she asked, which recent book has been in massive demand by retailers? Um, another, another, again, it's like probably depends where, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Mel, you've learned so much. I can tell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting it. You're getting it. I feel like, yeah. You just totally on your own. You don't need us. Yeah, you don't need us. Should we just pop off? I think we're done. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so pensive. Thank you. <laughs> I think this is what everyone else is, everyone that's watching is thinking they're, just, they're me. They're, mm. they're, that's how they're learning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, anyway. Answers. <laughs> I mean, well, we're in, well, in case anyone hasn't noticed, we're right before Christmas at the moment. So um, it is a very, very busy time for books. Um, this is traditionally the time where lots of publishers will release their big, um, their big titles for the year, you know, their big gift books, their big celebrity books and things like that. So, um, and it's those kind of books that we're seeing that are really sort of mm. spiking at the moment. Um, one that I'm going to say, which is probably going to be controversial, but it's true nevertheless, is the Piers Morgan Wake Up book. Mm. Um, which I think has been um, successful across many formats um, because, you know, when publishing that book, they've really understood who the market is for that book and have put it into all the retailers where um, where they feel it's really going to sell. And it's it's had demand. <laughs> well, where the crossover, so, so, yeah, seeing where the crossover is yeah. across the different formats, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, any other thoughts? Thoughts on that question or on to the next one? No? Cool. Um, so Candy's asked, what um, percents do traditional publishing and digital sales make up in the market? So I guess it means how, well, how much is physical format, how much is to digital? In term, I'm not sure I understand the question. I don't know if I can answer it. I think she means like in terms of like the overall maybe state of the UK market, what set what is made up, what is of book sales, how much is it physical formats and how much is it digital formats? Right. Um well um so interestingly, although we do see sort of physical sales across the, the market, we there is a um a, pro, a a system that we use called Nielsen, which is available to most publishers, we actually don't see that for ebook and audio. So um, it's not actually a question we could answer very, very easily. Um, and also, as the theme of this talk is, um, it does very much depend on from book to book as well. You know, there are some books that will have a really high sort of what we call traditional publishing or, you know, physical publishing and percentage and a very small digital one, but there will be others where it's the complete opposite. Um, so it really does depend book on book as well. Um, but unfortunately, that data is not available to us. Mm. Yeah. It was a really good question. Though. Like I can understand like from someone who's outside of publishing, you'd think that we'd be able to be like, oh, mate, it's like 20%. No, it's like it's it, there's a lot there's a lot yeah. of um, data that we have to work with to be able to answer that. And we just don't have access to that. Yeah, yeah I guess that kind of maybe it's sort of a, a thought that I have is it can be that actually obviously you guys work so closely with the retailers but a good point to make now is that they are that's that's the retailer so it also sometimes it's i guess we only get certain access to information as well from them yeah right yeah so yeah that's exactly. kind of where, yeah. yeah that's kind of where it can be a bit can be a bit tricky sometimes because we're also that's why it's so important to have guys like this working with our with our mm -hmm. retailers because um with the retailers because that's how we can build build that to get books on your books on the shelf whatever format it is yeah they've got the insight yeah. that we we might not necessarily have with um the data which then the numbers which which is a shame because love numbers and love data mm -hmm. um but um they can give us like anecdotal evidence or they can give us some you know some stories about what has worked for them what hasn't worked for them um to to help us with our publishing strategies too Mm -hmm. okay. Candy says, understood. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Candy. Oh, great question, Candy. Thank you. Yeah. Um, great question. Um, Judith has asked, do you rely um, on, 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 on what's, what's on TG team with your authors to push campaigns forward? Um, I don't know what TG hmm. is. Judith, can you tell us what TG is? Yeah, let us let us let us know what that. Yeah, not sure what she means by that. Um, so 
so maybe she'll get back to us quickly. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize that we've been chatting for almost an hour, which is amazing. Oh, so much to so much to talk about. Um, but yes, I'm going to say if you have any final questions, please let us know so we can answer them um, now. Um, tag. Here we go. Do you rely on tag team? Okay, like yeah. So actually, this is a. Do you rely on tag team with your authors to push campaigns forward? Oh, I that guess makes sense. Uh, that makes sense. Thanks for clarifying, Judith. Judith. Thank you, Judith. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, how 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 closely we should work? How you how closely you work with the authors, or how much do you need authors to do for the campaigns? Amara, you probably need better on that one. Yeah, um, I think we work with authors quite a lot. I think what we what we do is that we work with authors um, on their campaigns for campaigns that we think would suit their books and what the authors are comfortable with. I feel like um, it's again a very sort of like a collaborative thing where the author has obviously entrusted us with their book and we want to do using all of the expertise that we have around the business all of the you know sales history that we have we want we put that towards creating a campaign that suits the author if that makes sense and sometimes like i think one thing that we've talked about with also harper collins is that you know generally we do ask for some weird and wonderful things i'm sure mel you have done that for your authors yeah. also um yeah. So I think it's kind of that is that sort of again that sort of like collaborative um, way that we work what we tend to work with our authors anyway. Mm. Amazing. Um, yeah, actually, that was one of my questions that I had in general for you all, um, slightly similar, but is more on what can what do you think what can authors do to help support the sales teams um, for whatever format it is? I wonder if you have any any tips on that. What do you think? Melissa, <laughs> I need to say my name. <laughs> um, um, I think um, so. Obviously, you know, we work really closely with with the authors, editors. We work really closely with the marketing team. We work really closely with the publicity team as well. Um, and um, I think it's just um, it's just that, as I, I guess, just making sure that we're all in the loop. Um, and like authors, often when they're writing are writing for a genre that they know or they're writing for the area of the market that they know as well so they know um you know mm -hmm. contact or you know other authors to contact um, other outlets to reach um you know things like that um and they can often be the best advocates for their own book in that sense um and feeding that information through back to the teams um, on our side um, is a massive help because we can then put that into our um into our sales material into our sales pitches and things like that um and we can go forth with that information um all that information that the authors have in their heads or their thinking it, it, it all comes useful at some mm -hmm. point <laughs> um and, and and as long as you sort of just need that sort of flow of communication up i think it's it's a really um it's a really it's a really good thing i think melissa summed up really well yeah, yeah. Just, just, just <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess anything, anything um, I suppose as well, maybe like on a, on a, is there anything else you'd say on a, on a digital point of view that authors could, can do, Georgina? Um, um, no, I don't think there's anything more than what Melissa said, I don't think. I think, like as she said, we get a lot of stuff with marketing and um, the PR obviously, obviously really helps when we're pitching. Um, so yeah, I think Melissa's answer was it. Perfect. Bang on. Bang on. <laughs> um, amazing. Uh, well, that's um, all my questions that I have uh, that I have here, and I think probably as it's now seven o'clock, I think all we um, all we have time for today. But it's been absolutely amazing to chat with all of you, and I've just I've learned I've learned so much. <laughs> I hope that everyone watching has also learned a lot as well, and um, yeah, please just. Um, viewers out there ask us any more questions and we'll get back to you as well um if and if we didn't quite manage to get your question tonight then we'll answer it later um but yeah just but, you know thank you so much melissa georgina and amara it's been incredible to chat with you guys thanks so much for having us thank you for having us Bye. 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 Bye.
just going to minimize them first. Um, and then I'm just going to quickly summarize um, and just say thank you again to Amara, Georgina, and Melissa for such an incredible discussion and so much wisdom. And especially thank, to, thank you to all of you for all your questions and for joining us. And if you have any more, as I said, please comment and we'll answer them. Um, I just wanted to quickly tell you about the third panel in our series. Um, Yes, we're carrying on, I'm very excited. And that will be in two weeks time on Monday the 9th of November. And we'll be giving you tips and tricks on how to publicize and market your books. Um, which, and that'll be a discussion between myself and the brilliant head of publicity for Avon, Sabah Khan. Um, so put that in your diary now as well as you won't want to miss it. But in the meantime, thank you so much again for joining us and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.